uh, uh, opinion, this paper tends to investigate the works of a particular regional authors and cardinal jurisdictions who is considered the Bindari Kovi or the rebel poet of West Bengal, a uh, uh, state of India. And this paper will also study the cohesive nature of Anujur Subhartuma Vishwasaito, which is contemporary literature, in the light of David Damrod and Moody Khadajaria's writings, which disseminate the sense of inclusivity and push the limit of worldliness in world literature. Right? So this is the overview of the outline of my paper. Uh, then the research methodological part, uh, the present study is you know, theoretical analysis depends on the recent theorization of world literature. It is a comparative study of world literature and the regional literature in order to achieve the findings. And the study focuses uh, on the close reading of primary and the secondary sources. Uh, now I will focus on, uh, you know, the introductory part and in the introductory part as well as you can say the existing, uh, you know, templates of world literature. So here uh, I have uh, written in a way that literature by default is an identical figure seeking the reader's association to explore the regional narrative from the clammy sales of provincialism. It connects people with their different histories, culture, and ideas embedded in various forms of activities in different languages across the globe. A few texts uh, like the Thousand and One Nights, Halkesh, the text of Sanskrit literature circulated across geographical boundaries. So these texts are the common property of the literary people. Later the concept of world literature came into existence and when Gete announced that within quote, that I am more and more convinced and that poetry is the universal possession of mankind revealing itself everywhere and at all times in hundreds and hundreds of men. In the 18th and 19th century, the idea of world literature was not welcomed in that way. Instead, national literature was always prioritized. The British diplomat Lord Chesterfield clearly defined the term illiterate, but, uh, which means the someone who didn't know the Latin and Greek. So few nations uh, with their national languages have ruled over the literature in terms of establishing the nationalization of literature, and this nationalization has set the administrative process within the refined territory. Later, in the late 1990s, there was a renewed interest in the, in the value of world literature. Some of the most well-known you know, who ever published are Arundhati Roy, The God of Small Things, Render Mysteries of Fine Balance, uh, which was reviewed on Opera's book show in New York in 2000, and Khaled Hussain is the guide runner. The fact that all of these publications are from the developing nations is maybe the most intriguing aspect. Now, however, the economic expansion is the reason for their emergence in their modern world. So with the release of the Franco Moriti's text, the conjectures on world literature in 2000, and Pascal Casano was, Yes, in Pascal Kassan was a World Republic of Letters in 1999, the concept of world literature gained favor among the literary experts. So the literary aesthetic career has emerged as a result of the exceptional economic uh, expansion that affects the emerging nations more than the developed ones. The focus emphasis uh, for world literature has shifted from the northern to the southern hemisphere. The literary world is changing dramatically with the changes of the economy. Now I will uh, focus on the role of economy in changing the templates of world literature. What is the role of the economy? How uh, economy you know, function? So the notion of the people's association with their different histories, cultures, and ideas embedded in various forms of activities in different languages across the globe, it was a myth in the uh, early centuries. <coughs> the ubiquitous nature of literature is very much associated with the growth of global capitalism in the late 15th century. The prime motive of many countries, mainly the Italy, Holland, and England, was the circulation of money, right? Uh, which Marx referred to as a universal equivalent to make a capitalist world system. And the result was that the publication fashion in local languages. The global selection of literary works is greatly influenced by this economic sector. And to preserve their dominance across all industries, the economically developed nations started to exert control over the less developed nations. And Italy first experienced uh, economic prosperity, which in the 15th century began to control the growth of global finance. 
Following that, capital center of gravity was moved from Italy to Holland, then to England, and eventually to USA. A specific text may travel great distances from their place of production, but the socio-economic impact uh, they had on many facets of society was weak and lazy. The impact of writing, like uh, you know, 1,019 in Middle Eastern nations, Sanskrit in India, was quite minimal despite their global reach. So, uh, there is another way. Another way of emerging literature is to radically, you know, institutionalize it in the nation state in an atmosphere of threatened revolution of the world order. In the 19th century, the theory of naturalism drastically changed the image of rising social classes and ruined individuals. And the moment they called literary modernism the last literary season of Western culture. The national phenomenon became more and more international. The most effective part of modernism was the cohesiveness between the familiar and non-familiar in the same status. The rise of the South Asian literature gradually became visible in the post-modern era while Europe departed after the uh, Second World War. So the emergence was possible as they had the publishing houses of northern capitals. The social situation had gradually been now changing through readings, the ruling class divided society into the bourgeois and the working classes, and extra force was created by the unrest between these two classes in the colonized countries. So this force instigated the inertia of the writers to criticize the comparator bourgeois in the South Asian countries. And the generality of the emergence of world literature is somehow related to the history of war. The war happens to acquire uh, the capital and control the whole world. And literature has also been shifting since the changes of the strategies of the world day by day. What Marx and Engels uh, prophesied on world literature is in, in their communist manifesto, uh, 1848, the national one sidedness and narrow mindedness become more and more impossible. And out of the many national and local literature, a world literature arises is confronted by what it is today to fulfill the uh, hopeful. Now I would uh, like to talk about the recent critical trajectories of world literature. But uh, yeah, I would talk about Damroz, what is world literature, and Goyi Bhattacharya's, uh, you know, uh, what is the name of the book? post colonial writing in the world of, uh, post in the post colonial writing in the era of world literature. So, Spanish writer Claudio Guillen, in his The Challenge of Comparative Literature, has asked, so what can one make of such an idea? Idea means uh, the world literature. The sum total of all national literature, a wild idea, unattainable in practice. So the main argument is that world literature doesn't always focus on the conflicting diversity of the separate national traditions. And it is not easy to grasp the why the noise that Jane uh, Abu has called the global bubble. The Damroth claims that the world literature is not infinite and it is not an ungraspable canon of words. It is a mode of circulation and reading. If one wants to understand the canon of world literature, one needs different set of reading that can be appropriate to all texts. So the variability of a work of world literature is the one of the main constitutive features in Damlo's uh, What is World Literature? And only if it is studied with. When the text is popularized as World Literature, it is known uh, first as the literature, second as circulation into the broader world beyond its cultural and linguistic origins. So World Literature is a nascent stage, we can say that way, that is in the process of making. So Damlo has explicitly described the classical literature and unnoticed modern text worldwide after the demonstrating the literature of different classical literature and uh, classical literature, Damros has set a threefold definition. The first, he talks about the world literature is an elliptical reflection of national literature. Okay. Secondly, the world literature is writing that gains in translation. So, I will uh, now uh, define these things. The questions. Why we are? Why is world literature called the elliptical reflection of national literature? Right. So, compared is welcome. The idea of the world literature uh, as the cure for the ills of nationalistic separatism and uh, violence, especially the nationalistic heresy. So, he argues that all literary works are born within its national territory. 
The idea of NASA is a modern development and it has evolved with the totality of several ancient groups. The earlier works bore the marks of local configurations. They tried to incorporate themselves into the national traditions. Still, when those works were transmitted from their uh, periphery, they carried the effect of their national origins into the domain of world literature. Right? So, where they left their traces behind and were considered as refracted as a world travels further from home. So he prioritized the function of uh, the refraction in the cross definition of world literature. The role of refraction is crucial in the circulation of a particular text. It functions largely uh, for the text as a source and as a host culture. When work is received uh, in a foreign or a host culture, it becomes world literature because it refracts the source culture. So the host culture can utilize the material of the source culture to develop its own culture, world literature, in that we create space between the host and the source culture within which a text lives. As world literature is a coordinator between these two cultures. The second definition is the world literature that defined by uh, David Daniel is the world literature writing that gains in translation. The Daniels here elaborates on the significance of the translation. This, uh, look at the particular text and its operation into literature for a better understanding and it is taken as an establishment that the text is rhetorically decorated with its language, forms and themes, not only with its actual information. The information takes neither gain nor lose in a good translation. Their meaning is simply carried over with, with little and no effective changes. Okay? And in the third uh, definition of word literature is that about the mode of reading and the details engagement with the words beyond our own place and time. So here Dan Roth explains how the text connects with the foreign culture beyond its time and space or place. So the force of these words in translation relates and influences one another. In the act of reading, one can either postulate the literary narrative or less by communicating fixed information than by creating suggestive gaps that the reader must fill in. Either further emphasize that the different readers will necessarily and productively fill this gap in different ways. So meaning of the text varies depending on its reading in different times and places when what gets separated with a target culture enjoys its canonical status, but uh, opinion on the exact text varies from person to person. So they mingle the uh, non-canonical part with the canonical letters. Right? So whose slogans in cosmopolitan approaches a locally inspected cosmopolitanism it in, involves not an ideal detachment but the reality of the attachment, the multiple attachment or attachment at a distance. Many foreign works also get circulated in a target culture. The consequently the people of different culture get to deviate from the goal of the foreign culture. One can place what it is based on the conversation between the author's perspective and the readers. The authors are covered of the work of the others other writers and they also predict the each other words. When readers deal with the text, uh, deal with the uh, text, when the readers deal with the text, they incorporate the culture, cultural and historical context. So world literature is not an immensely body of material that must somehow impossibly be mastered. Uh, it is a mode of reading that can be experienced in such intensively with a few works just as effectively as it can be explored extensively with a large number. That is why it reflects the national traditions defined by a fluid and multiple set of possibilities of juxtaposition and combination.
primary coordinates, canonical and anthropological. He tries to relocate the notion of world literature in the history of post colonial writing. The recent reincarnation of the idea of world literature has been theorized by critics like David Cameron, uh, Moretti, Apasta, Casanova, depending on the colonial and post colonial histories. What is the idea? Uh, this is very crucial. The post coloniality is the pre history of the present setting pressure of the world literature. And the argument is that it is a book in two different ways. The first time is the close reading of the well known. Author of world literature like Rudyard Kipling and their writings are based on the structure and structure of the empire. The second part captures the energy of the changing nature of world literature in the writings of post war and from others like Naipaul, Rosby, Poesy, and others. So the canonization of post colonial writing within the framework of world literature invokes its reader to rethink both these illustrations through the interlocking of text, territories, and globalization. Uh, now I would uh, like to focus on Kadir uh, Nazrul Islam's. Text uh, called the Bottom of or uh, the meaning is uh, contemporary literature. Uh, where, uh, actually, uh, you know, this narrative solidifies the world making paths to actualizing and it demonstrates the inclusion of both Western and non Western literature. The main theme of the text uh, is the influence uh, of the literature. He acknowledges that the literature's coherence provides a long lasting remedy. For the deep placing darkness. He places the relationship between the global capitalism and the literary globalization in context by making references uh, to myths. He observes, uh, quoting uh, from the text, the capitalists have been devouring like Ravanas with 10 heads and have been stealing with 20 hands and along with their keepers turned Hanuman. They are still not satisfied. These greedy people say that sitas of the earth are to be enjoyed by the best people on the planet. When the Hanumans go to save Sita, the sentry ignites his tail. Then Hanuman jumps upon Sita and says, If I am to burn with fire in my tail, then I shall burn all your gold ornament too. So here, Nathan expresses his opinion on what it is here. And while Gaita promotes his idea in Germany, calls for Germans to actively contribute for world literature, Nathan makes a different kind of contribution in India with his idea of what one is society to, or the contemporary literature. So Nathan doesn't give a specific definition of the concept of global uh, literature or world literature. Through his literary effort, he contributes significantly to our comprehension of the world. His comprehension of it, uh, of it is fascinating and has a significant global impact on the state of idea of Transnationalism. He transferred his sale while he engages with the writing of the different authors of the other countries. <clears throat> so his readings are divided into two segments. Firstly, uh, he selects a few texts which soar high in the sky and look for them. The work of Sally and Milton are the texts through which he can fly higher and higher in search of a heavenly song. The other part embraces the dusty art with great affections. It means the words of he dealt with are grounded and connected with the deep masses. He grounds that it embraces the dusty art with great affection just as fight and child, you know, crash his mother on a dark night. Just as the tree clings to the soil with thousands of roots, a loving song of the soil. So through this imagery, he attributes the word literature as mother and all the national literature is her son. So when the sons are frightened and look at the gloomy sky, they embrace their mother. The time has come for all kinds of literature to embrace the world to form their worldly habitation. He pleads, it is not that this mud clad child doesn't acknowledge beauty, not want the heaven. If there is a heaven, then he wishes to bring heaven to earth. So our world has always been enslaved and it's Feet. Now we shall make it the slave of the earth. So the concept here is the people, uh, the concept of world literature is a bias in nature. The people from Eurocentric uh, countries tend to think themselves as superior in every field. Uh, they, their culture includes the idea of the global literature based on their literary creation. They disseminate the news about globalization. They do not favor disturbing the literature uh, nations in Europe. They speak with a skeptical tone when they grasp the world. So Nathan Lippet emphasizes uh, such an idea. He says that the literature of European is fine. The non-European reader has a connection uh, to the planet. The purpose of the world literature, uh, which is valued as a great challenge, is to degrade their fashionable uh, position. 
So they are eager to establish a connection with heaven despite the slavery of the literature. Nojanur article yes. This is the pride of Denmark and the darkness of the past. These are the martyrdoms of the elite and loneliness of the greedy. The struggle between the elite literature and the lower literature or the European or the non-European literature has continued centuries after centuries. Having realized the vibe of the struggle, Nojanur makes a comparison and the literature of capitalist countries is prioritized worldwide because of their socio-cultural economic richness. So they assume that the economically deprived nations are also poor in their culture, in their beliefs, in morality or ethical. So these cultural embraces uh, have been spread worldwide to identify them as inferior and deprived. Now I would say uh, uh, the inclusion of several nations. Why Nazaru actually do you not know, include, uh, includes many uh, nations literature? The inclusion of several nations are and their connections to the country's writing. Enriches the Bhartman in society. The work of Hamsa, uh, the Boyer of Norway, are very similar to the Upanishad. The character Swan in uh, Boyer's The Great Hunger reminds us of the character of Anandho from the Upanishad. In Hamsa, the growth of the soil, they find a similar character and phrases like the sages in the Vedas. Russia, Norway, Scandinavia have given the people uh, the tears and sigh of the misery that impart us from unbearable pain. So he again starts to critique the people like partners of uh, Anatole France and Jacinto Bevante. He quoted from their writings to portray their character. So Nojanur's work task is embellishment of sorrow and joy. All the collective imagination are put together in order to save a world where European and non-European, elite and poor, oppression and liberation pose it together. Nojanur's work on this society demonstrates the notion of planetary worldwide and the idea of the world are unique in that way. Later he finds a few authors who listen to the stories of heaven while lying upon his earthly mother's breast. Uh, so in the middle of the essay, the concept of destruction and preservation uh, are addressed to highlight the upcoming reformation of the path of the revolution. He portrays that capitalists and the greedy tentacles and compares uh, them with our great myth, uh, mythical figure, Ravana, with ten heads. that also I check out Basuki from Arab world, Karl Marx, uh, Nath Hamsan, John Boyer from Norway as a mentor, as a realist, suddenly he becomes a confused looking at him. Does he translate his soul to listen to the soul of the others? As Ravindran Tegar conveys a message in understanding oneself in the soul of the others, in his essay, the research site, the Rajul does the same while he has heard, my eyes close as I listen. In the dusty earth, I fall asleep, listening to the presence of beauty and aspires for the new sun in the new morning. In my dreams, I listen to the bulbul birds of Persia, the whistle of the camel driver in Arab, or the beautiful candle like bodies of the pale woman of Calvary. So, being a prominent Bengali poet, uh, Najrul uh, constitutes uh, the text focusing on contemporary literature where Najrul freely engages the prolific authors and their idea of his own time to deliver the message of worldly to the people across the world. He tries to ground the differential between the dream and the soil. By soil, he means the ground embracing the dusty earth with the great affections. By soil, uh, and uh, Najun's contemporary world is full of intertextual references that ignites the realm of thought to delve deep into the current situations throughout the world. So this paper explores the transcend of Najun, who refuses to accept literary oppression. He doesn't believe in the colonization of the mind, rather he prescribes the decolonization of mind that can create a world of literariness. So, to conclude, I would say, Nojul Bhattman Viso Saito announced many segments of world literature in terms of extending its uh, limitation. World literature and its existing and recent theories are becoming challenging in uh, changing its trajectories and exploring its possible tendencies to find it its own inclusive power. What Gaete popularized once in 1827 has been countering and recountering to expand the recognition of the literature, especially world literature. So the texts which are not visible in the mainstream literary arena are needed to explore and acknowledge their importance in the world of world literary world literature, not only as mere text, but as the text for world making. Uh, so before thank you, I would like to say uh, I am working on world literature and the regional literature and uh, uh, I have just uh, started you know, working and what have I have uh, studied, I have jotted down and prepared this paper.
So I am now in the nascent stage. So I would expect, uh, you know, I would like the comments and the suggestions uh, from uh, my friends. Thank you.